Good morning, you guys. All right, today is the 24th of November, day after Thanksgiving, or barely the day, barely after Thanksgiving by an hour. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's one a little bit after 1 a.m. local time here. Uh, we're going to be making a delivery to the Shamrock Foods facility in Eastvale, California. Uh, we're just under tw about a roughly 20 minute drive from here. Uh, so Eastvale, if you're not familiar with it, it's right just uh, basically where the 10 and 60 freeways meet. I mean, 10 and, uh, no, sorry, 15 and 60. 10 and 60 run parallel. Unless you're where they meet up with each other in either Beaumont or in uh, the L over by L.A. Um, Alright, so just south of I-60, uh, Highway 60, yeah. Just south of Highway 60 and on the west side of I-15 is Eastville. Just east of 15 uh, on that same side of 60 is Petaluma. Which you guys might, some of you guys might know where the, the Costco DC is over there and the Flying J as well. Or in well, Harupa Valley. But Petaluma is also in that neck of the woods. Um, Alright, so... We are going to be, yeah, we got a 2 a.m. appointment time. So that's why I'm up this early. Alright, uh, yeah, I've been there one time before. Uh, yeah, it's been, uh, well, according to my Google, it's been four years, but uh, yeah, I don't know exactly when. I, I didn't check my pickup delivery log to see when exactly I was there last, but talk a little bit of detail when we get over there. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and talk about um, downhill driving in a truck and an accident that just happened a couple days ago at the very bottom of the grapevine. Uh, so you guys might, a lot of you guys who are truckers might know where the the Val Road exit is in Wheeler Ridge, California. Now, uh, right when you get to the very bottom, the, the northbound side of the of the the, the grapevine, or also known as the Tejon Pass, um, you got a TA and Petro truck stop over there, off that same exit there, and right by right down there by the bottom of it, there was a truck crash. Now, I didn't know anything about it at first, but then uh, my friend who lives here in the SoCal was telling me about it. And at first, I didn't know what the details of it were. I thought maybe it was a truck ran into, uh, like a truck in a car or another uh, truck in another truck maybe had a get together or something that found out somebody lost. And but then I saw where exactly the slowdown started and how slow, uh, like it was all backed up and pretty much not moving, and how far it was backed up. Probably now, the grapevine basically spans from uh, the huge lake area or Cass Steak area um, up in the northern Santa Clarita Valley up to where that Laval Road exit is there in Wheeler Ridge. Now, right before you get to the I-5 I and Highway 99 split. All in all there, I think it's about 40 mile trip or something along that line, uh, you know, up across, across that mountain. So, we're talking about the very north end of that pass there. Or that, uh, and then uh, it's got a truck speed limit of 35, going down the northbound side. Now, this, this is another one of those cases why they have this damn uh, 35 limit there. I think it's bullshit to have the speed limit, but when you have knuckleheads like this person here, or more than likely a knucklehead, um, kind of, I can't say I'm surprised that they make these rules up. Now, anytime you hear, I was just talking to my wife yesterday actually about how, uh, you know, whenever, whenever, you, you know, I, that's something I learned from the Air Force. Whenever you find out there's a, you know, there's a rule that you think is stupid, there's probably a reason why it got created. Now, somebody probably did something stupid that they weren't supposed to be doing in the first place, and to idiot-proof that. 
some new rule got made up to try to prevent it from happening again. All right, so you know, that's where we get stupid rules like 35 mile an hour truck limits going down hills. Now, depending on how heavy you are and how your truck is set up, yeah, how much horsepower it has, torque, uh, how many gears it has, how are the gears arranged and all that. They're, they're lying, and even your final drive ratio, as you might call it, or your rear dip, uh, your, uh, your rear differential uh, uh, ratio. All those things can factor into how effectively you can climb or go down hill. Uh, yeah, or go down hills at any uh, given percent grade and weight. Now, like this morning coming down the Cajon Pass. It was getting foggy there and the trucks in front of me were slowing down or actually the traffic and uh, the truck in front of me were slowing down. I couldn't do more than about 40, a little over 40-ish anyway because of them but I mean I, I don't I don't think the fog was that thick but I couldn't see around these trucks. There was a truck up ahead, another truck in the lane to the uh, I think to the left up ahead next to, uh, close to the truck that was in front of me and then another truck that was passing me now we're in a left curve and I can't see around it and at my weight I'm uh, 76,000 pounds yeah I'm on the heavy end um, so I have a rule of thumb that I always follow or usually will always follow not always but it depends on it really depends on the mountain um, Generally speaking, I don't want to have to use my service brakes one time at all. Now, there are certain cases where I might go ahead and be in too high a gear and make myself have to use the service brakes, but usually that's only going to happen on shorter hills, like maybe uh, if I'm coming down the Ash Fork Hill in between Williams and Ash Fork, Arizona. Uh, there's a steep part of it right after you get past the brake check area, but it's not that long. So normally when I'm up and going down that, okay, I might be a little bit more prone to run in higher gear than I really should be going down at that, you know, in that on that hill there. Because I know it doesn't take long before I'm going to kind of not flatten out, but soften up the downgrade enough where I can easily uh, handle it. Alright, so... Uh, there are some truckers who have different rules of thumb they use also, like, you know, go down the hill and, uh, you know, whatever gear you need to go up a hill at that same grade. You know, some will say use the same gear going down, or some will say go down a gear or down two gears. Uh, but, really, I say don't, that's general rule of thumb kind of stuff that'll get you in the ballpark, but... I don't recommend going strictly by that because, like I said, every truck is set up differently and it really pays to have experience with each particular hill. Um, Cajon Pass, I've gone down hundreds, uh, thousands of times, uh, both in my personal vehicles and in my truck. Um, so, and I'm not, I wasn't in a hurry, but I know when I'm this heavy and I'm going down a 6% grade, generally, I want to be in 8th gear, specifically. And to be in 8th gear, I need to be somewhere around 40 miles an hour going down it. Um, now, going down the Cajon Pass, there's a 45 mile an hour truck limit. Okay, just because I can go that speed doesn't mean I should. You know, because uh, in order for me to do 45, I, I can't be in 8th gear. Right? So it's a little bit too high, it's just a little too high. Uh, it's a bit above my 8th gear red line, so I have to be in ninth gear to run 45 miles an hour, but gears with jake brakes work just like they do, like say if you're on a ten, like a road bike or mountain bike, you know, like a 10 speed as you might call them, or 21 speed or 18 speed, whatever, uh, you know, bicycle. You know, you might find that the, the granny gears, if you will, those take a uh, those are real super easy, you know, as easy as you can going up and uh, going up steep grades and stuff to an extent, but you can't go fast for shit. And then you go into the higher gears, 
you can go fast, but you can't, uh, you don't have enough mechanical advantage to be able to pedal your way up the hill. And kind of the same concept there, in, in a way, where the higher the gear is, the less effective your jig brakes are going to be. So, and, and I, I will often get drivers who are not so experienced thinking, I go, oh yeah, these jig brakes on this truck suck or whatever. I, no, it's not that they suck, you just don't know what, what gear you need to be in to safely go down that mountain. Now, what happened over here in the grapevine the other day? There was a, uh, from what I gathered from the incident logs, which I think I have available, I can show you screenshots of. Um, had a truck pulling double flatbed trailers with, uh, now usually you hear that in that area, you think it's a produce truck, but in this case uh, it sounded like he was hauling a bunch of uh, one inch pipes. One inch, uh, well I couldn't, I was a little bit mixed up on whether it was metal or wood pipes. Or, or, well, it had to been metal, I guess, but I thought I heard something about a bunch of wood all over the place, too. But, um, so, one inch, I don't know, maybe it was going to like a Home Depot or Lowe's, uh, you know, uh, distribution center or store, or who knows. Never know. Uh, either way, right, I'm going to go ahead and exit here at Harupa. Uh, I'll kind of explain it a little bit here. Let me get zoomed in for you as well. Alright. But anyway, yeah, as soon as I saw uh, where it was at and what was involved, like uh, that it was a truck involved, I instantly wanted a question in my head. Was this a runaway truck? Now, my friend didn't know that. He saw the incident log, but he didn't know that it was a runaway truck. He just saw there was, uh, yeah, he, I, that there was an uh, incident there, and there was a truck crash, basically. And when I started looking at the log, now when, when uh, there's a app I use for Cal in California called Cal Road Report, uh, I get all the CHP incident information on there. And when I pulled that incident up. I scroll down to the very bottom of the log entries because it's in chron a chronological order from bottom to top. Alright, uh, we're green but I want to make sure, yeah, we got no, no red light runners, pedestrians, or whatever. Alright, now uh, we're going to come over here to Millican Avenue and her turn left and go south until we're just south of the 60 freeway and then we're going to make a left turn onto uh, what's that street over there? I forget. Riverside Avenue? Same street that the Costco DC's on. Yeah, I want to say it's Riverside Avenue. Alright. Um, sure enough, I go on that CHP uh, incident info and uh, yeah, very first entry on there when I got to the bottom of the list of entries was runaway truck. So you have to wonder like, well, How'd this truck become a runaway in the first place? You know, there, you can't become a runaway if you have properly functioning jig brakes and you're in the correct gear. Now, one of the things I was taught by my trainer when I was learning to drive was if you have to use your service brakes more than three times in a minute, you're in too high a gear. You need to switch down to a lower gear. But I say for something a little longer like the grapevine, this is like a six mile, uh, six mile, six mi uh, percent grade. Um, yeah, and there's not really any letting up until you're at the bottom. Uh, I strongly recommend don't do that. I recommend you get into whatever gear is going to allow you to get all the way down that, uh, that hill without using the brakes one single time. Because the more you use your brakes, the more you're going to heat them up. Or even if they don't overheat, you can have uh, mechanical failures too. Uh, actually, there's a guy who was just on uh, Mother Trucker's YouTube channel not that long ago, about a month ago. He was coming down the Cajon Pass, same one I just came down this morning. And he ended up on the runaway truck ramp. And he actually went all the way to the very end of the truck ramp because uh, he was going so fast uh, down the hill and 
Now he claimed that his brakes were working fine. Uh, he had, he ran a load up to uh, Las Vegas from here in SoCal, and then was coming back to this, coming back this way. You know, and he had other passes. Uh, you know, let's say between Baker and Prim, Nevada, that he had talked about, and on uh, Mother Trucker's channel. Now he actually got interviewed by Mother Trucker, by the way, if you hadn't seen that one. But. Yeah, he said that he didn't, you know, he wasn't going too fast, like, bullshit. Yeah, I mean, when you're coming down the cone pass, like, if you have to hit your brakes at all, you're going too fast. And, like, I, I was able to go down, all the way down from top to bottom, never touch my brakes one single time. Not even to get down to my, just my gear that I needed at the top of the pass where the brake check area is at. Yeah, I, go, I let it just gradually slow down. I, had, I wasn't that much faster than that anyway because the weight and the climb before that. But now I'm going to give you an example that a friend of mine had an incident, or it wasn't an incident, but a good example of why this needs to be, uh, this should be adhered to. So my friend was somewhere in the East Coast, uh, one of those steep grades over that way. I can't remember, Black Mountain or whatever, one of those passes over there. Um, all right, so he goes down it, and he tries to use his service brakes, and they're not working. Or they're not working enough. Actually, his truck kept picking up speed, and he became a runaway. Now, in his case, his truck was not overheating. I mean, the, the brakes were not overheating. What turned out to be the problem there was uh, this trailer. I've talked about this in past show and tell stuff. Uh, there's a thing called an ABS valve. You got two of them. What is this? It's a tree right there in the lane. Um, yeah, there's a, what's called an ABS valve. You got one on uh, both sides of the, the air reservoir on the trailer. One of them basically releases the trailer brakes so you can actually pull it. And the other one is basically used where when you actually apply the service brake pedal, um, it basically puts there through the blue side and goes through that other ABS valve to counter the, uh, to counter the, the, the red side. All right, well, one of those valves, uh, I think it was, yeah, it was apparently the blue side valve, failed on his trailer. How we knew that was because he got it to the shop right away. I mean, well, he actually made it down to the bottom of the hill. He thought about using a runaway truck now, but he was, I guess, already getting close enough down to the bottom and the traffic conditions and situation. Uh, gave him reason to think that he was okay to make it to the bottom and then, uh, so yeah, it turned out his trailer ABS valve failed, which meant he had four axles there, four sets of brakes that were completely non-functional because the ABS valve wasn't allowing any air to uh, to allow those brakes to function. So all he had was tractor brakes only to get himself down that hill. All right, right here is Riverside. To make the left turn. Uh, you can have that happen, or if you don't, you know, maybe you have end up with a severed blue hose, you know, a pig, uh, pig I mean, not pigtail, but a glad hand hose. Um, all right, so here's something else I was uh, I was going to mention here. Um, yeah, yeah, bad blue, yeah, blue pigtail hose or uh, ABS valve that's going to cause your trailer brakes to not work. You'll be able to pull the trailer, but you're not going to be able to use the trailer's brakes at all if that goes on so you know all right so this right here is our customer but now i need to get the phone number off this thing now there's also we're gonna have to park here and then call from the street there's let me i can't read the number nine nine five one Seven nine zero eight three seven eight. All right. All right. Let me go ahead and find parking real quick. Uh, we might need to go around the block. Uh, is there room here? 
I don't know. It looks tight. Uh, we might fit, but I don't know. It's it's hard with the depth perception, so I don't tend to like doing that. I, I'll come around through here. Yeah, it is one of the things they mentioned that parking can be difficult to find over here. There are a lot of trucks here. How about right behind this car here? It looks like we got, uh, yeah, there is a, it's not painted here too. There should be just enough room for me here. Okay, so yeah, I ran out to make the phone call to, to get checked in. Uh, they don't want you driving in until the, the, until they're ready for you. Alright guys, we are ready to dock in now. Um, let me change my status. I mean, technically, yeah, I, mean, I can always use PC force to move by shipper since uh, this really is it. I'm already here, so... Forced to move by... Con and signing. Alright, so I, yeah, because I do have to drive on public roadway to get to uh, there. Uh, Looks like we're clear of this guy here now. Alright. Alright, so we're going to go back to where we saw those, uh, those that sign with uh, phone numbers on them. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and go around though. Now, now where this truck is coming out right now, uh, if I recall, that's where we're going to exit from when we're done making our delivery. But we're going to come back up here onto the Riverside Avenue side. I come in that driveway where that sign was at earlier to get checked in. Um, I don't know the door assignment, the door number yet. I just know that I got a call from the from them saying they have a door assignment for me to, to come to the guard shack. Alright, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to circle around. Uh, their check-in process actually was not bad. I mean, it's, okay, there's a lot of information they asked for, but um, instead of having, you know, actually I like the process in a way because I think the last time I came here, I kept calling and calling and calling until someone finally answered. This time around, what happened was I called, nobody answered, but within a few minutes, um, I got a, a text message back from them, or from some number. I don't know if it's the same number I message, that I tried calling, but I got a call from a, a text message from a number telling me I needed this that that and what, you know, a bunch of different information and uh, basically and uh, the receiving hours are from 2 a.m. to 10 a.m. Well, what is this? Uh, like a shoe or something? I can't tell. But yeah, they had all this specific information that they wanted. And all I had to do was get all the information that was needed uh, arranged and then replied uh, with uh, everything that they wanted and on the text message and that was it. Um, they didn't have to sit there and keep calling, uh, hoping I could get a hold of somebody forever. So, because otherwise you get like 20 trucks all at the same time trying to call them uh, with the same information and that's why it's hard to get through. So instead of that, uh, like I said, this process is pretty nice now where you can just Where you just text them all the information and then you just camp out and wait you don't have to do anything else you just sit there and uh, They'll call you up when they're ready to dock you in
are checked in now. So you go in the office here and uh, the girl will have a, a, I don't know if it's a gate pass or whatever for you. Um, they're going to want you to um, open your doors right here. She's going to inspect or take a look inside, whatever. We're going to be docking into door 217, and I think she said the office is by 201 or whatever. Safety vest required on, on, by all personnel entering this yard. Yeah, 201's this first one here. All right, look like it could, depending on where we're docking in, could be on the tight side because that drop trailer over there. And look like we might be in the ballpark of where it's at. It might be just a little bit past it, yeah. Uh, look like we're going to be right in, maybe in between these two... Um, Day cab trucks right where this guy with the dolly is at. Yeah, exactly. Right in between these two day cabs. Uh, Hang on. Uh, the wheel chalk's on the way. further down than I normally will and it helps that the trucks that I'm backing in between are both decals Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and check in here. Um, they do have a reputation for being slow, so just be forewarned. Um, I don't really care too much. I do have a pre plan, which I'll talk about on the way out of here, right? We'll uh, continue this on the way out. Alright, guys, we are done unloading here. Uh, it's right, uh, it was right out of the say, a little, little bit after 6 a.m. when they called me. Uh, it's 6.15, or actually 5.15, sorry. Um, yeah, 5.15. All right, let me get out of the dock door. Uh, I need to get my doors shut. And I need to send my empty call. I'm going to go ahead and come over. Probably further down this way, out of the way of all the other trucks before I do it. Uh, I'm a little bit tired there. Uh. Alright, so yeah, and, and there are no OS and D's, at least nothing that was documented on my BOL. Still have to double check though, that my trailer is empty. Talk about where we're going to next in a minute. Alright guys, let's get rolling here. Uh, 
get out of here and tell you where we're going to next. Uh, I don't recall there being a guard check over on this side. It's uh, yeah. Make sure you leave, leave, uh, knock out to the left, and come out this driveway I was talking about earlier. Uh, is this guy trying to come in the wrong way? have to uh, check out with anybody here. Could be wrong. But I'm not sure why this truck, is, this other truck is uh, trying to come in this way. That's what's going on here is this guy came into the wrong drive and needs to back out. I guess he had a goal also to yeah, I can't say I didn't make the mistake the same mistake before. Uh, I came in from the other direction though and I originally tried to come into this gate uh, this gate but there was a shamrock truck coming out at the same time and uh, down, he was high beaming me and stuff, and I figured I must be doing something wrong. And then that's when I figured out there's a, uh, another entrance on the other side. Alright guys, uh, just waved us right on through, now let's make our turn. Uh, okay, what are we doing guys? Alright, so what's going on next is I'm going to be going to Little Sister's Truck Wash in Fontana. Get my trailer washed out. Uh, it's a little bit too early to go to our uh, our contract facility, uh, I-10 truck wash in, in uh, Rialto or Colton, whatever you want to call it. And uh, we also have an account at Truck Tub over here, but I'm not a fan of going there. It's just kind of a little bit, I don't like dealing with that area in general. Yeah, the Truck Tub is over by where Flying J is. If you just make the right turn here on the riverside, go straight down the road, you'll go right past Costco. On the left side will be uh, uh, the Flying J. 
Make the left onto Vaa, uh, what is that, Etiwanda? Yeah, I think make a left onto Etiwanda. And right there on the, well, on the side street there, but uh, right before you get to the 60 freeway, is the uh, truck tub. Just like I said, I don't like dealing with that area. So I'll just go to Little Sisters. It's a better place to go anyway. And uh, from there, I'm going to be picking up a load in Colton. It's, I'm actually supposed to be there in about 35 minutes. I'm going to be a little bit late. Yeah, give me a tad leak getting over there, no problem. Um, I don't know if it's going to be a, uh, could be a live load or it could be a drop hook anyway, who knows. So I'll just get there when I get there. Uh, I'm not going to be vlogging that one because it's so close in the morning and uh, yeah, kind of kind of throws a lot at me to, to work on at the same time, at one, at one short time, so... Um, yeah, and I've done a, yeah, you guys know I do a, a ton of Colton pickups, so, yeah, there's no shortage of, uh, of, of Colton pickup vlogs on my channel. Back it off, dude. So I won't be vlogging that one. That one is going to Harrisonville, Missouri. It's not due in Harrisonville until the 28th of November. Uh, be a real easy time for me to get it if they're on time. Even running on recaps now. Uh, yeah, I, I easily have the hours to cover it. And that's going to be going, you know, well, let's see. Yeah, I'm actually already, I'm planning on just picking the load up and then just head back to my house and, uh, yeah, get some more rest and then run overnight tonight something so that'll be the plan all right well, i'm gonna go ahead and in this one here though you guys uh joy but guy i guess we'll see you guys in harrisonville uh within the next week or so all right have a great day we'll see you then